When tea leaves are plucked, they must be gone through a lot of skills and technologies before becoming the tea we see now. If we want to ensure that all kinds of tea can maintain good quality, we must follow certain processes and practices. Therefore, before we carry out tea manufacturing experience, let's get to know the key processes in the tea manufacturing process together. The key procedures for tea manufacturing include plucking, withering, fermentation, panning, rolling, mass rolling, mass breaking, drying, and roasting. Remind you that in the manufacturing process, not every tea type contains the processes you are seeing now and they may repeatedly appear in the manufacturing process of different tea types. However, you can first get to know the purpose of various processes in order to help you get started sooner when later you study the manufacturing process of major tea types in Taiwan. When plucking tea leaves, it is necessary to pick up both the two parts, bud and young leaves, at the same time. The plucked tea leaves and buds are called tea leaves and are the raw materials for making tea. The plucked parts vary depending on the tea type to be made. Some types need to pluck one top bud and the first leaf next to the bud, called one bud one leaf. And some types need to pluck one or two more leaves, called one bud two leaves or one bud three leaves. In the making of oolong tea, we'll select terminal banji leaf, that is, the top bud which has developed as a leaf and new buds no longer continue to grow, and terminal banji leaf refers to that the most recently developed bud tip and the previous new leaf form an opposite facing look. At this time it is called terminal banji two leaves. Or when one more leaf is plucked, it is called terminal banji three leaves. At present, in addition to manual plucking method, different tea plucking machine can also be selected in order to save both time and labor. Withering can be divided into solar withering and indoor withering. The purpose of solar withering is to allow the moisture in the blade of tea leaves to moderately evaporate by heat, reduce the water content in cells, and make the semi-permeability of cell membrane disappear so that the chemical components such as catechins in tea leaves can be oxidized by the enzyme to carry out fermentation. After solar withering, Partially fermented teas will be moved indoors to carry out indoor withering. At this time, the tea leaves will be flipped and stirred with both hands and the leaf blade cells will be broken by friction to promote the fermentation. At the same time, the moisture in leaf blades can be evenly removed by flipping. In the process of withering, the tea leaves will gradually lose moisture, causing damage to the tissues of fresh leaf cells and increasing the permeability of cell membrane, which lead to the enzymatic oxidation of the polyphenetic compounds in the tea leaves with the oxygen in the air, thus producing special color, fragrance, taste and quality of tea leaves. After rolling, mass breaking, Tea leaves of black tea will further go through a fermentation process to make the chemical components in the tea leaves continue to oxidize and change color. This is a key procedure for transforming into fully fermented tea. Panning is also known as blanching. The term fresh leaves here refers to tea leaves, 
which are the raw material of teas plucked from tea trees. The main purpose of panning is to inhibit the continued fermentation of tea leaves through using high temperature to destroy the activity of enzyme. Moreover, due to the moisture in leaf blades, will be greatly evaporated when conducting panning, making tea leaves become soft. This is conductive to the subsequent rolling operation. The purpose of rolling is to make the buds and leaves rotate and rub with each other by mechanical force so that some of the cells in the buds and leaves are broken. The tea juice oozes and adheres to the surface and when the teas are brewed in the future, tea juice can be quickly dissolved in tea liquor. In addition, rolling also has the function of shaping, which can make tea leaves curl into strips, reduce the volume of made teas and facilitate packaging, transportation and storage in the future. The main purpose of mass rolling is shaping. The semi-made teas are first put into a ball rolling and cloth machine to bundle them into a ball shape and then put into a flattening rolling machine to conduct mass rolling. After mass rolling, the tea leaves will be tightly formed into a semi-ball or ball shape, which can reduce the volume of made teas to facilitate packaging, transporting and storing. The purpose of mass breaking is to untie the tea mass that is stuck together. Because in the process of rolling, the tea juice will ooze and adhere to the surface of the tea, so that the teas will stick to each other and form a mass. Therefore, the tea should be spread out by mass breaking, which is good for heat dissipation of the teas and avoiding the generation of stuffy and miscellaneous smells. The purpose of drying is to use high temperatures to stop the enzyme activity left after panning so that the teas stop fermenting and the quality of the teas can be fixed. Typically, teas are dried to moisture content below 5%. Because both volume and weight of teas are reduced, so it is very convenient for subsequent packaging, shipping and storage. At present, the dryers frequently used to dry tea have two types, large type automatic dryer and small type manual dryer. Large type automatic dryer used for continuous drying and is suitable for drying a large amount of teas. And small type manual dryer is manual drying, suitable for drying a small amount of teas. After picking out stalks, different tea types will go through a roasting procedure to improve their quality. The roasted teas will have some roasting scent and their liquor color will also gradually deepen. May I ask whether you have understood the role of the key procedures in the tea manufacturing process? Every link of the tea manufacturing process is quite important. If a procedure is not handled well, it may affect the subsequent manufacturing process so that the quality of the tea is not as good as expected.